Hi, channels. Doc Robin here. Welcome to your weekly energy update for the week of April 3rd, 2023. Holy smokes. I say that every week. It always just surprises me how quickly things go. Hey, before we get started, I was up in Sedona this last weekend and just had a wonderful, sacred, connected experience. Um, and if you haven't seen my pictures over on Instagram, especially the one with the deer encounter, I think that's a reel actually. Um, go over and check that out. And while I was there, the guides were like, do a master class. And so I'm doing a master class. And this master class is on learning how to channel the different frequencies of wealth consciousness, everything from joy to creativity to radiance. Um, even to money itself. These are all things that all streams of consciousness that you can calibrate to on your way to becoming the channel for wealth and prosperity on all levels. So I'm offering that masterclass next Tuesday, the 11th at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And of course, there will be a recording and we will put the, the link to the enrollment page in the comments so that you can grab your seat in that. It's um, it's an easy yes. We're gonna spend about 90 minutes together and I'm gonna teach you about the streams of consciousness that are associated with wealth consciousness. I'm going to teach you some really practical things that you can do to manage your energy and to shift things around so that you can really be channeling the wealth consciousness. And we're also gonna talk about some of the blocks to channeling wealth consciousness that I've seen people at all levels really of business and of career kind of being challenged by at this point. So you will want to get your seat in that. I'm looking forward to doing that with you. And like I said, we'll put the link in the comments for you to register yourself. Okay, so today, as always, I use a combination of my intuition. I tune into my guides. I channel from the diamond core of the etheric realm. And my guides have asked me to start speaking about this like I'm a microphone. And there are, I have, I have benevolent guides. I have ascended masters who come into that space with me and communicate through this particular channel. So that's what we're doing today. I've already called them in and I've got my um, spirit animal cards here. I chose these specifically this week, especially because of the encounter that I had with the deer last weekend. It was just really wild. We, my husband and I had been out in the kind of the back of Boynton Canyon, further back than we had ever gone before. And we were looking for a specific secret cave that there were some kind of sketchy directions to find, but we're, we're up for the challenge. So we had gone past any place we'd ever been in the canyon before. And we're coming out on this little kind of social trail, little, little foot trail off the main trail and I came around the corner and here is this deer standing there probably at one point she approached me so she was probably only about six feet from me it was really a wild experience and I was so grateful for it but I'm using the animal spirit cards today to kind of help us tune in to the energies that are available to us to to see what's in store for the week and how we can partner with these energies in order to help us to channel the highest levels of wealth consciousness. Remember, wealth consciousness is about attracting, receiving, and holding wealth on all levels, including financial wealth, including money. So let's see what we've got in mind today. Give me just a second. <clears throat> oh, you guys are going to love this. So good. All right. Okay, here we go. The first card we have today is Chameleon Spirit. Now, you know, I talk to a lot of messengers, way showers, and thought leaders about how you can be too well adjusted for your own good. 
about how you can kind of become a chameleon in your own life and trying to figure out how you need to be in order to help other people feel comfortable and how you need to be in order to not make waves or rock the boat. And yet in this case, this really beautiful chameleon spirit has come forward. And the message here is really simple. Act as if. Act as if. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean play out a false reality or a non-reality. But it does mean when I think about acting as if I think about my future self, the version of myself who already is doing, being and having those experiences that I know are meant for me, I think about becoming that version of myself. And I actually use doors as portals to remind my conscious mind that I'm moving into the consciousness of my future self. So what does that look like before I'm looking at the door right in front of me? the door to my office, when I want to use a door as a portal to becoming more of who I am, to becoming my future self, I'm going to stand on this side of the door and I'll just set the intention. When I walk through this doorway, I am remembering that I'm already my future self. So then I can start asking questions like, what does my future self do in a situation like this? How does my future self respond? What does my future self think about? when she's preparing for her day, things like that. Those are kind of markers in the intellect or the cognitive processing that can be really supportive of you as you're making the ascension to your future self. So act as if, do not be a chameleon in the sense of taking on other people's projections or making other people feel comfortable around you or being too well adjusted for your own good, but instead shape shift into your future self. That's the first one. The second one is wombat spirit. Look at how cutie this one is. Wombat. These are Colette Baron Reed's cards. I love her and I love her work. So happy to use these cards. Wombat spirit message, be at home. What does that mean? Being at home means being embodied, being in your physical body. It is very, very difficult to manifest to self-actualize, to become the future version of ourselves when we're not fully embodied, when we're not fully in our bodies. And there's a lot of reasons why there, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why people aren't going to be in their bodies. It can be trauma related, stress related for two examples. Um, there can be some ADHD symptoms that create kind of a disconnection from the body. But the more that you can be embodied, embodied in your consciousness, in your physical body, the easier it is for those, those things that you are meant to do to be and to have to come to you for you to self-actualize. So be in your body. And I can't see who just wrote in, but hello there. And somebody said that um, their son was showing them photos of wombats yesterday. Yes, pay attention. This is a synchronicity for you. Here's the next one. Wasp. Sometimes life stings. One of the challenges, I think, when we're on an ascension journey is that we have things that come up in our exper experience and in our awareness that are running counter to what we want to do, what we want to accomplish. So it can be things like missing appointments or forgetting to follow up on something or dropping the ball or getting distracted or saying you want to do one thing, but spending your time doing something else, having your consciousness hijacked by Netflix or whatever, whatever it is that you're, that you're being distracted by. And I always think that it's important for us to pay attention to those things, not to bring about shame, not to bring about guilt, but to bring about an inv invitation to transform and to deepen into what you're really meant for. And so let's just take the simple example of missing an appointment or no showing for an appointment, just not showing up. It may be out of blatant, like, I don't know, just narcissism, like, you know, F off, I'm not going to show up to this thing. But for the most part, especially the people in my spaces don't do that intentionally. Oftentimes, it's more like, I forgot, I got distracted, it dropped off my calendar, I certainly have that challenge myself from time to time. And I screw things up like that. And um, I've had to have my own experience of walking through that embarrassment and shame and kind of feeling like a bad girl or feeling like I did something wrong. 
And so rather than wallowing in that or sitting in that energy of shame or embarrassment, just using that as an opportunity, using those experiences as an opportunity to recalibrate to the version of yourself who gets it right. Not gets it perfect, but gets it right. And can self-correct or, or course correct when necessary. I was just on Jaden Sterling's podcast yesterday, and we'll let you know when that comes out. But Jaden and I talked a lot about wealth consciousness. And one of the things that he he channels money, actually, he's going to be on the podcast in a couple of weeks. So you'll be able to hear it directly from him. But he channels the consciousness of money. And he said one of the things that money told him is that the consciousness of money is the combination of creativity and discipline. Usually, especially because I work with a whole lot of high achievers who also happen to have ADHD, we hear discipline and we think prison. But really what discipline is, is this. This is how I like to think about discipline. If you've ever been in a poetry class and you were asked to write a poem in iambic pentameter or to write a haiku, there's a certain structure or to write a sonnet, there's a certain structure, there's a certain number of syllables in each, each sentence or each line, right? That's the rule, that's the discipline. When you have the discipline, the creative energy can flow into that discipline and create something beautiful. So discipline creates structure for your creativity to flow through. And if we can start thinking about money as the dance between discipline and creativity, if we can start thinking about ourselves as the, as the interplay between discipline and creativity, that's going to go a long way to opening ourselves up to higher frequencies of consciousness, including wealth consciousness. But it does take, to go back to wasp spirit, it does take a conscientiousness to really kind of laser in on what's the thing that's going to stop you? What's the thing that's going to stop you from doing what you say it is that you want to do to be or to have. There are a lot of people in the, in the spiritual development spaces who say that they want to be thought leaders, that say that they want to write books, that say that they want to start podcasts, and yet they're not doing it. And I, most of the time, it's not for lack of information. It's not for, for lack of desire. It's usually for lack of discipline. It's usually for lack of decision. And you know what, if that stings, then that's the thing to take a look at in your own life. There are a lot of people in the entrepreneurship space who say that they want to be six or multi six or seven figure business owners. It's usually not for lack of knowledge. It's usually not even for lack of expertise. But instead, perhaps it's time to look at is there is there a lack of discipline? You know, I give the Neo personality assessment to a lot of people, especially to spiritual entrepreneurs and leaders who really want to dial in on their ideal clients and to eliminate the struggle bunnies and the ones who create drama and drag in their, in their programs. And one of the things that we see when it comes to personality is that they're, the people who are struggling, the people who say they want to do something are high achievers but they actually score pretty low on self-discipline. Now you don't have to score super high on self-discipline in order to be successful, but you do have to have a level of discipline, especially selective discipline when it comes to your work, to being consistent in the marketplace, to showing up consistently, to writing your copy consistently, to being in the public eye consistently in order to allow people to see you, to get to know you, so that they can work with you, to know that you're available to them. And by the way, if you haven't taken the NEO yet and it kind of pings something for you, it's probably time for you and I to connect on that. So you can just DM me and let me know that you're, you're interested in learning more about that. That's a, it's a 90 minute intensive where we really dial into who your ideal client profile is, what parts of your personality might be kind of getting in the way of you calling in your ideal clients and then giving you a real clear sense of what your it factor is in terms of calling them in as well. It's very powerful. So DM me on that and I'm happy to share that information with you. 
I don't want to like wasp spirit, but I kind of like wasp spirit. How do you feel about it today? Last one. This is my favorite giraffe. This is the overall energy of the week. This week is big picture. What's the big picture? If you could just stretch your neck up high become the giraffe shape shift into the giraffe and be able to see out the out of the entire field of what's going on what is the big picture in your life and you can actually partner with giraffe spirit in order to do that so that you are not alone on this journey but you have these beloved animal helpers who can support you who can help you see the way see what's next so partnering with giraffe this week just imagining yourself sharing consciousness with a giraffe could be a really fun experience to see the big picture, to see. You can see when the predators are coming. You can see when the sun is rising. You can see where the foliage is that's at your height so you don't have to bend down too far in order to eat your weight in, in leaves. Do you see? So holding the high vision, holding the big picture, but getting real clear on what the discipline is that you're being called to this week. Maybe it's around your calendar. Maybe it's around physical exercise, nutrition, water intake. Maybe it's around sleep hygiene. Maybe it's around just general energy hygiene, but there is a place of discipline that's being called. Remembering that discipline is like the rhythm of an iambic pentameter, poem, a sonnet, a haiku, that's what discipline is for you. All right. That is your energy update for this week. It's been my joy to be here with you. We are releasing another episode of the new podcast, Becoming the Channel. That'll come out on Thursday. I'm looking forward to that because I'm going to be talking all about dreams. I have a PhD in psychology. I learned how to interpret dreams while I was in while I was doing my studies. It's something that I love. And I have a new take on dreams as well that I'm eager to share with you and the guys are eager to share with you on the podcast. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you next time.